This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of B.C. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. KCM Wealth Management. Is this it? Here we are. Well, the provincial election is fast upon us, May the 14th, I am told. Uh, so uh, we thought we'd better get some candidates out here, and we've done exactly that. We have a, someone from the Conservative Party coming up next week. A couple weeks later, David Eby running in uh, the Premier's uh, riding, uh, he for the uh, NDP party. But today we're delighted to welcome an old friend and colleague, uh, Daryl Pluckus, who for about 1,080 years has been running the criminology department at the University of Fraser Valley and if we started to list all his associations and credits and so on, we'd be here for hours. The man is on uh, committees of the United Nations. He travels around the world. He's involved with the Canadian Center for Substance Abuse in Ottawa and so on. Suffice it to say, he knows uh, often what he's talking about. He's very involved, has a lovely wife and two boys, and uh, has been a resident of uh, the Valley for a great many years. Great to see you, Daryl. Thanks very much for having me. <laughs> yeah, my, my pleasure. So why this, why now, and why the Liberals? Well, I guess, you know, there's a number of reasons, as yeah. it isn't for everybody, I suppose. But well. one of the big things was starting to pay attention to what's going on in the world. Yeah. Uh, looking around Greece, Cyprus, Spain, many parts of Europe, looking what's happening in the United States. And there's some real serious problems on the economic front. You know, yes. governments are falling everywhere. Yes. Uh, places like uh, Greece, 35% unemployment. And you pay attention to why that's been happening. And it really c can be traced back to government and government overspending, uh, not doing the kinds of things they could do to stimulate the economy. Uh, so that was part of it. Uh, part of it was knowing, um, you know, the opportunity which we have coming up in BC. Which is? The, well, one big one, of course, yeah. is the natural gas initiative. Right. And, you know, here we have a situation where what amounts to uh, what could be a trillion dollar uh, opportunity. Yes. And that investment gives us the opportunity to catch up on our debt, bring down debt. And one of the things I think is important to providing what everybody wants, better health care, better social services, better criminal justice, all of the things we right. want to do. If we really want to do those and have them be sustainable for a long period of time, you need to have the money to do that. So you can either tax people to do that or you can get it out of the ground. So I'm the hugest fan of getting it out of the ground. And the bonus is with natural gas yes. is that its impact on the environment is huge. Uh, You're talking the, about LNG. Yes. But, d d now, do you have the same feeling about the Enbridge, about the pipeline? Well, on, on Enbridge, yes. I would go back to saying what the Premier has said. Like, there are a number of conditions which have to be met in order for that to take place. Yes. And there, there are things that we should all be concerned about. Number one, we better meet environmental concerns. It, it better be good for British Columbians. It better right. be good for First Nations people. Um, and I think those kinds of uh, things, if they're in place, she listed five points. Um, and w if those can happen, then yes, I think it's great. Well, we acknowledge that nothing in the human world is ever going to be perfect, but, well, but with Enbridge, there are a history of problems. I mean, I would love to see Enbridge work. I'd love to see the pipeline work. I'm not mm -hmm. against uh, using natural resources. But Enbridge, uh, with, the, with the, the spill in the river in, in the eastern yes. United States, it was demonstrated that guys mm -hmm. were asleep at the switch up in the Edmonton uh, extension of the plant. and, mm -hmm. and they saw that this was about to happen and they just kept playing cards. Yeah. We can't have that, can yeah. we? Yeah, no, that, that's really stupid. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. But I, I think that, you know, it's, it's an, I think it, it's an exercise in making sure people are guarding the fort. I yes. mean, I, I, I think the yeah. idea 
that we always have to have in mind is British Columbia is part of Canada. And, really? You know, Still? Yeah, <laughs> of course. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, we, I bon we, we sometimes when we look at the individual circumstances, we forget. Like, Alberta is landlocked, and Alberta needs to uh, get its resources out of the province if we want to export those. So, so we absolutely have to be attentive and appreciative of helping them do that. What we're saying is, yes, so long as you can do that safely. Now, if you said, uh, you know, is there, a, is there safer ways to do it? Are, are people proposing we ship it by rail? Are they pr proposing that we ship this stuff by tanker truck? Uh, I think it, what, what we need to do, and I really do believe it, it will come to be, uh, is coming up with the security that's needed to make sure uh, first that if, if there, first that there won't be a spill, but if there are leakages in that pipeline, that we're all over that bullet fast. I, I hope so. Yeah. I got to ask you a question. I'm mm -hmm. just staring at you and listening yeah. to you, and uh, there's only seven people who watch this program, so okay. you're safe to say this. <laughs> Have you been offered a minister's position? No. Because I'm looking not. at you and I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, this guy already looks ministerial. <laughs> oh, You're sounding I wish senatorial well, already. My opponents haven't said that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, what about the what about the minor fiasco of being appointed? What what about the history of Daryl Pluckus in Abbotsford South? What happened? Why was why was why did your writing people walk out on you? What was all that about? Well, I I wish that could have all been different. Yes, and I think if there had been a little more investigative <laughs> reporting, if you will, okay. uh, you know, the story might have been presented a bit differently. How would but you it, present it? Well, I think, it, uh, you know, one of the things I would say first okay. is that it is always the prerogative of a, pro of a party to choose their, their candidate. Okay. Uh, and I think the messaging came but out democracy at democracy don't hoit. Yeah, well, yeah. obviously, yeah. but <laughs> I think what first came out yeah. was that, uh, you know, somehow Mr. Gill was pushed off to the sideline. That was the sense, uh, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. But if, if people reeled back a little bit further than that and said, well, what was the wish of the riding association? Yes. And, you know, there's, there's such things as stacking the deck so, so that, you know, if somebody else did come along, that, that's just not going to happen. Um, and it's my understanding uh, that Mr. Gill was offered an opportunity to run in an incredibly safe riding. The, oh, the, okay. the neighboring Is he doing riding. That? Uh, no, he ch he chose uh, chose oh. not to do that. It was, you know, unfortunate. It's unfortunate that that didn't uh, that didn't work out. And all I can say now is yes. that I'm feeling very good about the support of, okay. of South a South Asian community. Yeah, you had I I I saw that you had reactions on both sides of the fence. I mean, some people said you know this isn't kosher, but other people said no 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 this is the way it works and. Daryl's an appropriate candidate, and 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 that's fine. Yeah. So we'll leave that. Let's let's okay. get let's get past <laughs> it. So uh, and uh, so why the Liberals and why Christy Clark? You you've well, talked what, to, oh, you yes. talked about some yeah. some of the economic concerns you have. No, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. one of the things that you know, and and this is comes from my being a social scientist for thirty five years. Right. And you know, most everything we do, we begin with well, what is the evidence? Lay the cards on the table and paying a lot of attention to track record, especially coming from, from me as somebody yes. who studies human behavior. Right. Uh, I care about past behavior. And you look at the, what the BC Liberals have done, their track record. If we say, well, what about economics? Well, there is no government in Canada which has done a better job in terms of fiscal management, like holding the lid uh, on spending. There, there is no government which has done better in terms of trying to remove us from the bureaucracy and red tape. And I think there's been outsiders who have mm -hmm. said that. And then, of course, you know, very close to home for me is knowing what's happened in terms of crime reduction, beginning uh -huh. with the establishment of the uh, provincial secretariat. Mm -hmm. And uh, what came out of that is, over the last decade, is we have had the single greatest drop in crime of any jurisdiction in the entire Western Why? world. Well, I think part of it is, is, you know, you always have to begin with government support for particular initiatives, and we were pushing the crime reduction initiative, which means not just it's not just about having more resources for police, but having police work in different kinds of ways. And uh, 
one of the things that, of course, needs to happen, I think most of your viewers would agree, we need some pretty significant changes to the way we do criminal justice yes, in, in BC and Canada. Yeah. And so we're setting the stage for that to happen. So it's, it's not just about that fiscal management and all of those successes. It's that commitment to encouraging resource development and investment in British Columbia. And I think it's fair to say that we have not had ever such a great amount of investment in this province as we've had in, in recent years. Then I back up and say, well, what if we had an NDP government? And I look at what they did in the 90s. Certainly in Abbotsford, what that meant is we got absolutely zero. We got nothing from the NDP. But what we got provincially is a mountain of debt. We got six consecutive downgrades of our, of our credit rating. Uh, we have a good credit rating right now. We do. The top credit rating. Top. But, but the Sun the other day published uh, you know, a side-by-side -side thing about the reality of uh, of debts, uh, you know, uh, according mm -hmm. to the two big parties, and uh, the writers of of this piece basically said, you know what, the NDP has done as well, if not better, than than the Liberals in terms of uh, not having debt or cutting down debt. Well, I think if you're yeah. paying attention, yeah. if you're paying attention to the matter of spending, yes, I think it's pretty clear the Liberals have done a much better job of holding the lid on spending. Now, what's happened is the revenues haven't been. Uh, what the government was expecting them to be, but that didn't stop the government from doing, for example... Quick, quick, quick question, yeah. okay, because we're going to go yeah. to break in a minute. When we mm -hmm. come back from break, I want to focus in on uh, at least this, the area in which you are truly expert, and that is uh, criminal justice and reform and yeah. so on. Happy to do um, that. But let's talk about leadership. There are many people who will say openly that Christy Clark, we're not talking about her personality, mm -hmm. we're all lovely people, she's a lovely, yeah. interesting person, bright person, but Christy Clark, her thrust, her, her passion is running, she loves the fight. Mm -hmm. She doesn't like so much the governing. Now what would you say to that? Well I would say one of the things that has troubled me over the years greatly is meeting lots of people in political office, lots of people in very high levels of government, yes. and the vast majority of them are gutless. They just don't have that strength of character, that staying power to say, look, I'm going to be doing the right decision, regardless of what the consequences are politically. And one of the things I see in Christy Clark is that strength of character, really? that staying yeah. power. Uh, certainly, you know, if you, you know, think back over the, over the recent, last year, for example, yeah. there has been an onslaught of attack on her. And she has weathered that storm and at the same time managed to do things in a very significant way to, to demonstrate leadership, there's holding the, the government There's no together. question that she's a tough cookie and she's very smart. Tough. But I tell you honestly, Daryl, between mm -hmm. you and me and our seven viewers, yeah. I, I believe that if Christy Clark had a magic wand, she would spend eternity at a high school track meet. She loves competition. She loves this. This is where she shines. I don't know that she really enjoys running the affairs yeah. that much. I'm not sure that many people do okay. love the, the running yeah. and, and because, you know, it, it really is an exercise yes. in nonstop in demonstrating that you have tough skin. But I, I think what's yeah. so missing is. is government making decisions, and this has been going on for decades, making those decisions for all the wrong reasons because, it, because what's popular? What, what are most people going to like? Yeah. And one of the things that I have seen in her, yeah. and I think people would really see it if they had a chance to meet her yeah. face on, yeah. uh, is that she's not like that at all. She is into doing, what is the evidence? What can we do which is right here? And we're going to take a beating for it, but we're going for it. Okay. And, and it's too bad I, we didn't have more people like her. I can see that you've been anointed. I can see. <laughs> <We're gonna laughs> I haven't. I'm you've always been, in you've trouble. Been, you've been given the Christie juice <laughs> no. somewhere. We're going to take a little, <laughs> a little break and come back with our guest, uh, Daryl Blackas, who is running for uh, the Liberals in the provincial election in Abbotsford South. Uh, just a reminder, you can write us anytime at davidbernard.com. 
And uh, we just take a moment to uh, say hello and thanks to these lovely people who allow us to bring this program to you here on Shaw Community Television Cable 4. Back in a minute. This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of B.C. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. KCM Wealth Management. We are back in studio with Daryl Plekis, uh, a liberal candidate for uh, Abbotsford South. And um, let's go to criminal justice because that's something that, that you've mm -hmm. devoted most of your working life to. And, and I know that it's not just your working life. I know mm -hmm. that you're passionate about these ideas and so on. You've said in, in the first part of this conversation that we've done very well in terms of reducing crime. Let me ask you a couple of specifics. How do you think the, the drug courts are doing? Uh, my, my sense of it is that it was a great idea and still continues to be a great idea, but they're not being executed deeply enough or no. well enough. And I know in talking to you, there's yeah. few people who know as much about the whole matter of substance abuse and how we ought to best deal with that. Um, I think that we need to, I mean, there's so many things we need to do on that front. Yep. You know, we, we need to do a better job of making sure that we have places for people to go when they need it, when they need it now. Please. Uh, we need to have a, a broader range and more sophisticated uh, system of treatment for people who are suffering uh, uh, substance abuse, and including, as everybody knows, and we seem to get nothing done on it, is the whole uh, mental health front. Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we, there's... I mean, it's almost like, well, where do you begin? Because there's so many issues yeah, one that, of the that thing, need to be dealt well, sorry with. Sorry to interrupt you, Dara, but you know, one of the things that's interesting to me is there are some wonderful things being done that don't get very much press or attention. Uh, and, and yes, there are a, a mm -hmm. ton more. But I just noticed, for example, the other day, uh, I live around South Granville. And, mm -hmm. and I accidentally discovered a gigantic building not far from where I live that is all housing and programming for uh, mental patients. And I went in and I talked to people and I just thought it was a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, it, it brought me to tears how, what, a, what a sweet operation this is. And you know, it, this is a perfect example of I am my brother's keeper and we're right. doing a good job in some areas like this. But they're just, you know, they're these little outposts of wonderful activity. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. certainly that's the case with drug treatment programs. There yeah, are sure. some spectacular drug treatment programs. Yeah. My question is, why aren't they all like that? Yeah, What's please. wrong with us? Let's yeah. get going on it. And sometimes yeah. we fail to recognize that in order to seize on that, the success of that, you, you need to have it properly funded and you need to have it properly staffed. And cheap. That, cheap. Yeah. It's but cheap it, compared to other things. Absolutely. Yeah. But what, what would you do if, if you were Attorney General or Solicitor General? I don't know who, whose call this would mm -hmm. be. This is a dangerous question, dangerous mm -hmm. politically. Would you constitute a new provincial police force? Would, would you go for an OPP or, you know? No, uh, I don't yeah. think that's going to sell very well to individual communities around the province really? to start you, you with. You think the RCMP's measuring up or? I do, okay. in, in individual communities. Like, okay. you know, we can look at everything and say, gee, I wish things were different. Sure. But, but yeah, I'm everything could be better, yeah. But, uh, but I'm reminded of this, that if you go around the province and look at individual jurisdictions, where they're policed without benefit of regional policing, yes. or the proposal to do provincial policing, yeah. they've done very well, thank you very much, and they've done better than most every jurisdiction in the entire Western world. They've, they've been spectacularly successful. And we have a model of providing police in BC, which is a, a so-called hybrid model. Yeah. So each police force does their own thing in their own individual community. And then where we can join up 
uh, yes. initiatives, like on IHIT, that's the Integrated Homicide Unit, exactly. the dog services that's exactly in exactly what I wanted so, to talk about. And yeah. then we, we end up having the best of both worlds. So I'm saying until I see some sign that somewhere on the planet that somebody's doing that better, then, then maybe we will consider. We have, to, we have to remember the example of Clifford Olson where, where he continued his nefarious madness uh, uh, unscathed for years until finally a guy who was retiring or had just retired from the police force right. said, folks, you're not talking to each other. He doesn't care that there's a boundary road you know, whoever no. this person is. He drives with freedom from one jurisdiction mm -hmm. to another, but you guys aren't talking to each other. And as soon as they became integrated, he was nailed. Right, but what we have on that front right now is every police officer and every police force in the province, and we're the only place in North America that has this. What is it? They're all on the same information system. Are they? Absolutely. Okay. So very quickly, something's happening in Fort St. John and somebody yeah. wants to connect with somebody in Surrey. In a nanosecond, that can happen. So oh. on top of that, what we have, which we never had before, is incredibly sophisticated, intelligent software. So we could not only know who's doing what, we could know who's associated with who. And that's probably one of the biggest things which has been able to, to drive police to rid ourselves, as we have reasonably successfully, gangs to the extent that we used to have them before. Spectacular success through this uh, causing police to be able to work together in more efficient, effective ways and capturing the benefits of technology. Blunt question. If we legalized all of the various things that are illegal, all the substances that people like to use and abuse, if we legalized heroin, uh, uh, pot, whatever, it, would the gangs disappear? Well, certainly not on the marijuana front. As we hear people think, you know, say often, oh, gee, you know, gangs would disappear. Uh, that's just pure rubbish. Because You're what the we, first person I've heard no, say this in no, public. That, no, yeah. that is, it's pure rubbish because there's 585,000 people who smoke marijuana in this province and they smoke on average 281 joints a year. That is a minuscule amount relative to the amount that's being produced in BC. 80 plus percent of the marijuana produced in this province is exported, sold. is sold outside. Where does it go? To the United States primarily. And the farther south they get that marijuana, the higher the price for that marijuana. And what comes back is, is cocaine. And if there's anything that has fueled organized crime in this province, yes. it's, it's precisely that. Um, so, you know, the other thing people think, oh, gee, if we legalize, all of a sudden everyone who's a, mar a marijuana smoker is going to begin paying, uh, going to their local liquor store or whatever <laughs> and, and paying for it. I'm thinking, no, that, that's, I'm, whole, I'm not thinking that they're going to do that. They're, they're going to say it's important for me to pay taxes and it's important <laughs> for me to pay four times as much yeah. for, for my drugs. And then, of course, I think what people are also ignoring which we have a social responsibility for, is there is always a small group in society who, who will be seriously harmed by yes, using course. drugs. Yeah, and we have an obligation to those people to make sure that that doesn't happen, however small that group okay, is. Okay, we got about two minutes left. You spent 35 years being, you know, an academic, studying, thinking, talking, mm -hmm. noticing, reading about these issues. Now suddenly someone hands you the scepter. What's mm -hmm. the one or two or three big things on this file that you would do if you, had, if, if, if you were handed well, the control? Well, one of the things I think we need to do is have night courts, for example. Like, you know, we, we have, uh, there's no reason because we have police yes. working 24-7. Yeah, yeah. Why can't we have other people in the system doing the same? Okay, what I would mean, that do for us, night courts? Well, one of the things we clear cases. Uh, it would oh, clear cases, clear that backlog, make yeah. it easier for victims, yeah. uh, make it easier to schedule police officers who have to it have to attend. Oh, court. so I so I'm I'm working all day and it's difficult for me to show up in court, but I could come at seven thirty. Absolutely, okay, and gotcha. come okay. and come in the evening. Okay. Uh, so I think the other thing that we could do, and this yeah. is really important.
let's think of better ways to deal with those people who get short sentences. Like to send people to prison for a day, a week, yeah. a month is just utter nonsense. It's goofy. It is. And like for, there isn't a British Columbian who could believe that we're providing for a safer British Columbia or we're rehabilitating by somebody going to jail for a week or a month. It's nonsense, we've got to stop it, and yeah. we could use technology better to provide it for a safer community, greater opportunities for those offenders. And the other thing, again, that I would do in a very big way is, uh, because it's at the roots of most of what causes crime, yeah. is get really, really serious about how we're dealing with people with addictions and mental health issues. Beautiful. One minute left. Take a totally different area that most people don't identify you with, again, you're, you're given a cabinet post, you have the opportunity mm -hmm. to do something, to pass a bill on a totally different subject, health care, education, bowling, I don't care what it is. Well, what, what's on your private list? What would you do if elected? What, what, what are you really hot about? One minute. R reducing debt. Oh. Because debt, every time we spend more... Kills it's us on all. The, it's killing yeah, us. It is. Yeah. It's killing us, and it's on the backs of young people. And it hurts our ability to provide good programming down the road. Because yeah. that debt goes up incrementally, and at the same time, we decrease our ability to provide the programs we need to provide. So I think that's big. And of course, the other thing I, I'm so passionate about is let's get our resources out of the ground, and especially those that can help us have a better environment. Nothing about the opera. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Daryl Pleckers, yes. thanks. Good yes. luck in the yes. uh, Thank you very good much, luck David. in the election. Thanks for having me. All right, folks. Yeah. Uh, that's a conversation with Daryl Pleckers running, and you can find him at DarylPleckers.ca. Uh, next week, Nathaniel Lim is the BC Conservative Party candidate for Richmond East. Uh, he will join us, and we hope you will as well. In the meantime, davidberger.com is the site to go to, and we thank you for being here with us tonight, today, on Shock Community Television, Cable 4. Good night.